In March 2019, a white supremacist attacked two mosques in Christchurch, New Zealand. He killed 51 Muslim worshippers and injured at least 40 others. He came to the main room and it was terrible. So many people, you know, uh, some of them were screaming, they were asking me to get some water for them. Uh, some of them were, you know, uh, shot and another dead body was on their, uh, you know, on their leg and was screaming, can anyone help? Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern called it one of New Zealand's darkest days. She also showed support to the victims and their families. They have chosen to make New Zealand their home and it is their home. They are us. Those three words are now the title of an upcoming film. Andrew Nicole is set to write and direct. They Are Us is not so much about the attack, but the response to the attack, how an unprecedented act of hate was overcome by an outpouring of love and support. But the news wasn't well received by New Zealand's National Islamic Youth Association. It created a petition that got more than 70,000 signatures. It states, the film centers white voices and therefore will continue to whitewash the horrific violence perpetrated against Muslim communities. Many on Twitter agreed. This user blasted the film saying having Hollywood use a tragedy in order to make cash off from it is absolutely insensitive and harmful. Another tweet argued that centering white saviorism in a film about trauma caused by white supremacist terrorism was sheer ignorance. And even the Prime Minister agreed there's something off about this possible picture. In my view, which is a personal view, it feels very soon and very raw, uh, you know, for New Zealand. Uh, and while there are so many stories that, you know, should be told at some point, I don't consider mine to be one of them. They're the community stories, are the family stories. But producer Ayman Jamal says the filmmakers already consulted Christchurch's Muslim community. The families of the victims say otherwise though. And from now on, the filmmakers will work with the Muslim Association of Canterbury to address any future concerns. But that didn't stop one producer from dropping out of the project. I now agree that the events of March 15, 2019 are too raw for film at this time and do not wish to be involved with a project that's causing such distress. According to producer Ben Flanagan, many white saviour films have done pretty good at the box office. You protect his blind side. When you look at him, you think of me. Yes, ma'am. From the blind side... He's like a genius. ...to Green Book. They're all examples of white people having to rescue non-white characters. This gentleman says that I'm not permitted to dine here. I'm afraid not. As for They Are Us, the filmmakers may be listening to their critics, but it's still not clear if they're willing to change the film's concept, if it means losing money at the box office. Let's speak to Mohammed Hassan, a journalist and poet who, in an op-ed, has told the producers that Muslims are not props for a movie. Hi there, good to see you join us today, Mohammed. So, tell us why you think the idea of focusing on white people's reaction to a terror attack that targeted a majority non-white community is wrong. You know, Elif, when I first heard about uh, this movie being uh, made, the first time I heard the uh, read the article, I honestly thought it was satirical. I thought this was something that was on the onion and people were sharing it because I could not believe that somebody could actually finance a movie about a terror attack that wasn't focused on the victims of the terror attack. This what happened on March 15 in Christchurch to the Muslim community in Christchurch was simply an act of white supremacy. Um, it was a terror attack that targeted Muslims based on their belief on the holiest day and in their holiest site. And here we are not two years after the most devastating terror attack in modern New Zealand history. And Hollywood producers want to make a movie about it but they very clearly do not want to make it about the Muslim community. They don't want to make it about the victims or the survivors or 
the people at the center of the story. They instead want to make it a feel good to quote them uh, and their press release, an inspirational story about Jacinda Ardern, the prime minister of New Zealand, her reaction, which was commended by most of the Muslim community and the entire world, and the reaction of other non-Muslim New Zealanders. Uh, it seems bizarre to me that you would choose to tell a story and not center it around the people that are affected by it the most. It seems like a no-brainer. Okay, so Mohammed, uh, some people might think that those who are reactionary against the idea of this movie suggest that white people's perspective isn't worth telling in this one. Is this what you suggest? Is this what the community suggests? White perspectives, white voices, uh, white narratives are, uh, um, are important, but they are not the center of the story. And this is an industry that has for decades chosen very specifically to center white voices, white feelings, white uh, narratives, white retellings, uh, and white perspectives on everything from uh, recent events to world history to, uh, to civil rights movements. Um, the list goes on. And, and we as Muslims, we grew up with this tradition of watching ourselves being used, as you mentioned before, as props uh, to tell other people's stories. Often, in the case, it's to tell white people's stories, American stories, British stories, French stories. And this is the way that our history has been written over the last uh, couple of hundred years. It's incredibly Eurocentric. And this reflects the way that both our Hollywood uh, movie uh, uh, industries are operating, but also the news media. And over the last 20 years, that has, has taken a massive toll uh, and damage on the way that Muslims are perceived around the world. And in communities like New Zealand, which is a small country with a tiny Muslim community of 40,000 people, that made that kind of narratives, those damaging stories that are told about Muslim voices without Muslim voices, ended up causing tremendous harm to the lives of ordinary, innocent people. So do you think Hollywood is using the Christchurch tragedy to make cash off from it? Would you say that? I think it would be very naive to assume that anyone in Hollywood would try and finance a movie without the intention, at least in part, of making money. Um, movies aren't financed in Hollywood if they can't produce a profit. And from the very beginning, the way that this was centered around Jacinda Ardun, who has become somewhat of a celebrity leader in the world, she's very recognizable, and to uh, choose an actress such as Rose Byrne, who's an award-winning actress, again, very identifiable, to help finance this movie, um, the way in which this very fragile, very sensitive story that has affected the lives of thousands of people in very real ways, not to mention the hundreds at the center of this in the Christchurch Muslim community, to choose to frame that story in a way that silences their voices and, and ignores them and instead tries to paint it as a feel-good story that mm -hmm. is going to make audiences come to the theater and buy tickets and, and, and feel good about themselves is, is quite absurd and, and is very deeply offensive. Okay, uh, Mohamed, you said something uh, which was really touching for me in your piece. You said that um, you feel being spoken about, but not spoken to. So, uh, you know, following on that, Said Abdigani Ali, spokesperson for Al Noor Mosques, which um, was the primary target of the shooting, said that there will be consultations going on uh, with the community from this point on. Are you hopeful about the future of this movie then? Initially, when they announced the movie, they said that they had consulted with the Christchurch Muslim community, that they had spoken to the victims at the center of this. But what we heard within the days uh, following that was that the vast majority of that community, including the victims' families, including the survivors of the March 15 attacks, came out and, and almost unanimously said that this was the first they were hearing about this film. Uh, in fact, a, a group um, called the 15th of March Fana Trust, which represents 78 um, individuals individuals who are from the families of those lost as well as you know the 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 the, the bullet injured from their family, they came out and they put out a very strong statement saying that they not only were not consulted on this movie, but they do not want this movie to happen at all. Okay, so we don't have much time left, but I really want to hear what you have to say about this. How should a good Christchurch movie look like and when should it come really? I think one of the things that some of us in New Zealand felt uncomfortable about in the aftermath of Christchurch was the way in which our leader, 
who did a fantastic job uh, in reaching out to people and, and, and to kind of really drive the emotional tone of it, but to watch her become this almost heroic figure around the world. And for the Christchurch story to become a story about Jacinda. You know, we saw in Burj Khalifa in Dubai, uh, two days after the attack, a picture of her being projected on the tallest building in the world, as opposed instead of the victims themselves. Now, what Jacinda did was commendable, but it is not heroic. She did what any leader should do in this story. But let's talk about who the heroes of the story actually are. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about Imam Gamal Fouda, the, 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 the leader of Al Nur Mosque uh, that you mentioned, who had to lead his tiny community through the most devastating thing that will ever happen to them. Yeah. Let's talk about Abdel Aziz Wahab Zada, the, the, the Afghan refugee who, um, who chased um, Brendan Tarrant with an FPOS machine, preventing the deaths of hundreds of lives. If we're telling a story, then let's really think about who the heroes are of the story and who it should be centered on. All right, Mohamed Hassan, a journalist and poet joining us from London. Thank you so much for this.